There is no magic way to make yourself more productive when you're sitting at your desk, but there are a bunch of items and upgrades you can do which really help out. I've been making desk videos here on YouTube and in general in my life for years and years and years now. So I think I've got a pretty good idea of the best items you can get. And I'm actually split between two desk setups right now. I've got a home office setup, which you've seen pretty extensively on this channel. And I've also got a setup here at the studio. And between them, a lot of the items stay the same. So I know they're really good. And today I'm going to share all of those with you. So let's get into it. We really have to talk about desk shelves to start with. I actually think they're one of the best investments I've made in my desk and has made the biggest difference. Not only does it raise your monitor up to a better height for your eyes, but it also acts as a really good storage solution for all of the bits that you have on your desk. You could slide things under it. You can put valet trays in there and fill it up with other things and they're fantastic. And they also add a real nice kind of completion look to the desk. If you've just got a monitor sitting flat on a desk, it can kind of look really flat. So having that verticality can really help. It also helps you kind of design your desk a little bit nicer. I have books in there which kind of match the other pops of colour I have on my desk and it makes the whole thing feel a little bit more cohesive. You don't have to spend loads here. I've got one from Grove Made which was a little bit more expensive which is probably the best one I've ever had. It's really nice and I have one at my home office from Oakywood which does a very similar job at a fraction of the price. Next up is one which I think is really, really important as well, and that's to get a monitor arm. Most monitors, if you just have a generic one, have this really tacky, horrible plastic stand, and the second you take it off that and put it on a monitor stand, it looks so much better. It adds this nice floating effect to your desk, and if you have that combined with a shelf, it just has this really wonderful look. The best part about these is it's a really cheap upgrade. The one I've been using at my home office was £20, and it has been solid and sturdy and held up by, you know, 20 seven inch 4k monitor no issues at all the other good thing about them as well is a lot of those monitor arms have cable management built in so you can tuck in wires and all that sort of stuff and just make it look a lot neater than the stand ever would there's a huge variety of monitor arms they come in different colors and different styles and you can get ones which can like bend the monitor around so you can have it in the perfect place i really like this kind of simple standing one which i got from von house which has just been perfect for my home setup I will say though, some monitors do get a pass. If you have an Apple Studio display or a Pro Display XDR or some of the ones from Samsung, some of the stands they have built in actually kind of complete the overall look. And that's why for my studio display, I've actually kept the stand with it. I did have one before which had the vase amount, but it just felt really strange and didn't look right. Overall though, a monitor arm is a really cheap upgrade that really elevates your setup. They're totally worth it. Next up, we really do have to talk about keyboards because they really kind of are the gateway to your computer as such. So having a good one is completely worth it. And there's so many out there. I've tried a ridiculous amount of mechanical keyboards and other styles of keyboards. And the amount I have at the studio and at home is a bit of a joke. But the one I've really settled on is from NuFi. It's the Halo 65. And I've mentioned this in a few videos before, but it's just a perfect keyboard for what I do. It's got 65 keys, it's hot swappable, it's got Bluetooth and cable connections and all those sorts of things. And my favorite part about having these sorts of keyboards is they just make interacting with your computer more fun and <laughs> having more fun on your computer is kind of like a little key to unlock more creativity and productivity. I don't mind typing loads on here because it's fun to do so on this keyboard and I like to have fun with them too. I replace the escape key with a little squirtle keycap which is kind of cute and you can kind of make it match up with your desk setup too. It's totally worth looking at getting a decent keyboard and that extends to the mouse as well. I'm not going to talk massively about the mouse here but if you're a trackpad user get the Apple Magic trackpad pad because there is no better one out there but I'm a massive user of the Logitech MX Master series. I picked up the MX Master 3 and I've got that across both of my setups and it's perfect for what I do but there are some Logitech lift options and things like that so have a look around for a decent mouse as well. I would personally sit both of those on a desk mat as well and not have a separate mouse pad for your mouse helps everything feel a bit more cohesive and knitted together, which I really, really like. This next one kind of goes without saying a little bit, but you really do need a decent chair for your office. I was using this Ikea one for a long time and I never really had any issues with it before, but I had a sponsor on my Instagram a while ago from a company called Slouch who made this Task One chair. And since then, I've completely moved over to it. And I'm happy to say they're also sponsoring this video too. 
It's often hard to realize how bad your chair is until you sit in a much better one. And that's pretty much what happened to me with this slouch task one. And while I didn't have any back issues or anything like that before, at least I know now that I'm looking after it properly. The Task 1 from Slouch features a fully adjustable lumbar support, multi-movement arms, fully adjustable tilt tension, seat sliding and negative tilt, so you can get that tailored comfort for those long sessions sitting at a desk. It does all of this while keeping the cost at a really fair price too. I must admit having those armrests, which I didn't properly have before have made it a huge, huge difference. I didn't realize how much I was missing until I kind of sat there and had my arms on them. This feels so much better than my old chair. Also something which is really important for me is you can customize the color of these so you can match your office space completely, which is really nice too. If you do want to check it out, I leave a link in the description below and you can use the code Tom five to get a cheeky discount too. Of course, a huge thank you goes out to Slouch for sponsoring this video. So at this point in the video, you're probably expecting me to talk about standing desks and how they're really great for your health and all those sorts of things. And honestly, they are, they're totally great for your health and I have one myself, but I tend to generally forget that it even does it. I'm always sitting down. And the thing is when I do end up raising it, everything on my desk kind of tends to wobble a little bit. And that could be because I'm really heavy handed when I type or use any of my equipment, but I just generally find it's not as comfortable as I expect it to be. This next upgrade is something which is a bit more directed towards iPhone users, but I know it can happen on Android as well. And that's having a dedicated MagSafe stand for your iPhone. Ever since Apple put out standby mode, which lets your phone turn into kind of a digital clock and notification center when it's on charge, this has just been a perfect addition to pretty much any desk setup. The one I have here is from GroveMade and it's really weighty and it kind of matches all the wooden aesthetic I've got going on here at the office. And standby mode is really awesome. If you're not using it, I'd really heavily recommend you do. You just put your phone on a MagSafe charger, turn it to the right on its side, and then it all pops up. It's kind of like turns it into this mini dock for your iPhone, which is just really useful to have sitting on your desk. Also, if you're a little bit worried about power and it being charged all the time, is on your iPhone settings, you can just let your iPhone charge to 80% and it will just stop taking charge so it's not like full all the time, which is something else which is just really, really useful. I've also got one of these stands at home and this one is from Ugmonk, which is very similar. It's part of the Gather collection and it's just great. It's a really nice addition to any desk and if you've got an iPhone, absolutely do it. On the topic of stands and if you've been watching this channel for a while, you'll know that I often like to have my iPad sitting next to my monitor and the main stand I've had for this has been from ChargeM Pro. This is the MagSafe stand from them and it's been really great. I've really liked how that's worked and I kind of use it in every setup incarnation I have. I actually had one which added to my monitor arm, which was like its own floating vase amount, which was really, really great. And I really like that. But I've since kind of taken those down every time I'm not using them because whenever you take the iPad off, it just leaves this kind of big black hole next to your monitor and it never looked nice. And I was trying to find a solution for that and I thought I did for a moment. I bought these kind of magnets from Rolling Square, which I saw in another video. Uh, thank you, this is E, if you're watching this, you showed those to me. And I stuck those to the back of my studio display and then I stuck those to the stand for my iPad and then popped that in. And the idea was I can fold those away and then bring them back round when I need them. And it does work but it does not feel safe. The iPad's really heavy, so just one jog of the monitor will probably make that tip over. So I think I'm not going to use that solution and go back to the stands, but I do really like them. Having your iPad on a stand next to your monitor kind of lets it act as a second smart sort of stand. You can use universal controls. So you can use the same keyboard and mouse, just go over to the iPad and use it like normal, and then come back to your Mac and use that like normal. I've used that for a really long time and really, really enjoy it. It can be a really nice productivity boost that's not just a distracting second screen. Once again, there's loads of stands out there. You don't have to spend loads of money to get a really nice one. You can pick up a decent one from Amazon for relatively cheap and get this effect. But if you've got an iPad, this is definitely worth looking at. This one's a huge one and I see so many people ignoring it and it's probably because it's not overly exciting to talk about or even think about, but you need to cable manage your setups. Oh my God, it makes the biggest difference when you see no wires at all compared to some of the messes you do see out there, which are just like spaghetti junction. It just makes your desk look really cluttered and not a place to go to work. The great thing is here with cable management is it can be really, really cheap. The ones I'm using at the moment are just from Amazon. They're just a bit of white trunking and they're about 10 pounds, I think. And once you've spent about half an hour getting it all sorted out and all the cables nicely tucked underneath, it's such a nicer setup, not only for yourself to come into, but it also helps clear your mind a little bit, lets you just get 
on with work rather than worrying about pushing stuff out of the way and having cables everywhere. It really is worth the upgrade. And if you want to take it a little bit further as well, something we've done in the studio is to stick a power strip underneath so you can plug all of your items into that one plug and have one cable running off the desk rather than loads and loads and loads. Okay, before this video rounds out, there's two more things which I wanted to mention, which are kind of more overall things, which I think are really important for your desk setup as well. The first up is to not only design your desk setup to be really nice, but to also think about the space that it's in. If you're going to put a lot of effort into your desk to make it nice, you might as well make the space around it really nice. I managed to do that at home by showing off lots of stuff that I loved within the space by having little figures and prints up. And when we moved into the studio, we took that to the extreme limit and really made the entire studio feel like a space where that desk can live. So don't ignore your surroundings. Get a nice light, get some nice figures of things that you love and make sure the whole place reflects what you're trying to do. It honestly really is worth it. It's also worth thinking about matching your desktop wallpapers to kind of the whole space as well. This can really tie everything together and just make it feel really neat. And if you do like these wallpapers that I've been showing throughout the video, I'll link those below too. And the second and kind of final thing to round up this video as well is you need somewhere to be messy. Your desk setup can remain clean at all times, but sometimes you just don't have time to make sure everything stays perfect and that's completely okay. At my home office, the third drawer down is just the come and go drawer. I put loads of stuff in there, I take loads of stuff out all the time. It almost doesn't really have the space to be neat. And here at the studio, I've got the bottom drawer of the locker and in there just kind of goes stuff every now and then, which doesn't really have a place. And I think it's totally okay to have that and it can sometimes be the key to making everything else feel nice. So don't feel bad about it and use it as you need to. Anyway, that pretty much rounds up this video. I really hope you've enjoyed it. Those are all the accessories and kind of little desk upgrades which have really helped my desk setups and my overall productivity over the years. If you've got any suggestions though, or any items you think anybody should look at, then leave them in the comments below. I always love to see those. And I will see you all in the next one.